to serve the Lord. And um, like they have shared, um, we are going to look at being fruitful in the knowledge of the Lord. Allow me to maximize the available time by quickly getting into the devotion. And uh, our verse for the whole week is First uh, Peter chapter one, verse Second Peter chapter one, verse eight, and it says, "For if these things be in you and abound, they make you that you shall neither be barren nor unfruitful in the knowledge of our Lord Jesus Christ." Now, when you begin uh, from the first part of this portion of scripture, and uh, that is from verse five, it highlights a number of things that we shall be able to look at throughout this week. Now, uh, to be fruitful, I've come to realize is, our, I think one of the first commands that God gave out to man, when you go to Genesis chapter one, verse 28, it is plainly stated by God as a commandment to Adam and Eve, be fruitful and multiply. And I must share with you this as something I appreciate from scripture that Jesus expects us to bear fruit as it is plainly stated in part of John 15 verse 16 where he says, you have not chosen me, but I have chosen you and ordained you that you should go and bring forth fruit and that your fruit should remain. To bear, to bear fruit is not an option for a Christian. And if we do not bear fruit as we should, we certainly lose a sense of purpose and meaning to life. And it is obvious that we lose the sense of living. We have no reason to live. Uh, we may be familiar with the, with the story of the fig tree. When one day Jesus was hungry and approached this good-looking fig tree, and when he found no fruit on it, he cast it. In other words, it had no reason to exist because it bore no fruit. So as I have highlighted this whole week, we will be able to look at a number of things that I have seen as key ingredients of being fruitful in our Christian journey. I have come to appreciate that fruitfulness is not something that does happen by chance. It's not an accident. And it will call for somebody to be intentional and it requires real work. Somewhere you will find statements like being diligent. It requires diligence. Allow me to start with one of these key aspects of being fruitful and it has to do with faith. And from the portion of scripture, that is 2 Peter chapter 1 from verse 5 to verse 8, uh, faith is foundational to bearing fruit. Now, most of us are familiar with Hebrews 11 verse 1 that I think is the precise definition of faith as it states it as a substance of things hoped for the evidence of the things not seen. And so as precise as it is, it is very, very, very foundational, very critical in, in, in the Christian's life. Because when you go ahead in verse six of the same chapter, that is Hebrews 11, you'll find it plainly stated that without faith, it is impossible to please him, that is to please God. For he that comes to God must believe that he is and that he is a rewarder of them that diligently seek him. 
faith is not presumptive. It is based on God's word. It would require us to totally depend on God. A quick story that I once encountered somewhere of a man <clears throat> who went mountain climbing. And unfortunately, he had this accident. He lost grip of uh, the rock that he was climbing. How, uh, and, 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 and he, he found himself hanging by the rope, a safety rope that he had on him. He could not help himself, the story says. And he chose to look to God, to ask God for help. When he cried out to God for help, as he swung on the safety, safety rope, he had a voice speak to him, cut the rope. It is said he was afraid to cut the rope. He thought that should he cut the rope, he would be in more danger. Because he was afraid, he didn't do anything. If you like, okay, he did something that was not cut the rope. In that story, it is stated that this man unfortunately died. <clears throat> that those who found him are found that he was hanging on a rope and the ground be below him was safe for his landing. In other words, the, the space between his hanging and the ground itself was just safe enough should he have cut the rope and landed uh, on the ground. He called on God, as the story says, but when he was told to cut the rope, he could not cut it because he was afraid. Faith in God is best on his word. And when you get to Romans 10, verse 17, it says that faith comes by hearing and hearing the word of God, by hearing the word of God. We will, in every way, have to depend on every word that proceeds out of God's mouth. If we take it a priority, to feed on his word every day on a daily basis and for every situation, I am sure this is going to be the right way of building our faith and our faith in God alone. It will give us the chance to have many things built in our Christian journey. And the things that we'll be seeing are the things that will be seen in the course of the week. And therefore, I would like to I recommend to us in our daily living, in our routine experiences of life, the word of God. Many times, uh, we may find ourselves relying on many other sources but they have their own weaknesses, they have their own gaps. But the word of God is very, very sure. And so if we embrace it, I am sure we'll not be the same again. I would like to let us know or remind us that faith as well is the working of the Holy Spirit in our lives. There is nothing that we are going to build in our lives by our own selves. And when you get into Galatians chapter 5, verse 22, where the fruit of the Holy Spirit is plainly stated, faith is one of the aspects. Just like Jesus says that he will live, he said he would leave to us a comforter who should help us in our Christian journey we are going to so much depend on the Holy Spirit where he leads and what we say 
should be our only option for us to be able to move, for us to be able to progress in our Christian journey. And therefore, um, you will not separate the word of God from the Holy Spirit. The Spirit of God, the, the workings of the Spirit of God are consistent with his word. We have seen uh, in Hebrews 12, a number of patriarchs who are counted as champions of faith. Truth be told, they were ordinary men just like you, ordinary men and women just like you and I. But what made a difference was these are men that took God by his word. And these were men and women who cooperated with him. Just, as, just to remind us again, somewhere Jesus says, I think that is John 15, um, uh, uh, John 15 at the start, that um, uh, where he, he clearly states that without, without him, we can do nothing. And therefore, the Christian life is plainly uh, lived in connection with Jesus Christ. John 15 talks about the true vine, and that is Jesus Christ. And verse, um, verse 5, part of it says, for without me, you can do nothing. And so the Christian life is not lived independent of Christ himself. It is not lived independent of his word. It is not lived independent of the Holy Spirit. This journey has its own challenges, its own demands uh, due to the reality of sin and Satan himself. And so we will need so much uh, from God himself through his word, through his spirit, and a close connection to Jesus Christ through these two agencies to be able to realize uh, fruit in our lives. Again, I've said, uh, allow me to say it, uh, that when we don't bear fruit, we will suddenly lose a sense of purpose and life shall not have meaning at all. And as a result, we shall have no reason for living. In this journey, may God help us to also grow our faith as part of being fruitful. Come the subsequent days that we hope for, that we look forward to, we are going to look at other aspects that are going to be uh, critical in our Christian journey in bearing fruit. But as I said, faith is foundational as far as uh, as far as bearing fruit is concerned. May God bless us this day as our faith is nurtured by his word and with the aid of the Holy Spirit in our lives. God bless you all.